Hi, my name is Gamma, and today I'm going to do a rundown of Delta V Rings of Saturn. Um, this is a really fun game, I'm just doing an off-the-cuff little tutorial. I can do this as a playthrough, I'm probably going to end up doing this as a playthrough. Um, but this is basically just going to be the tutorial today, and getting a little bit of starting cash to get some the first mods that we're going to need for the actual playthrough. So, if you need a tutorial breakdown, because this tutorial can be kind of finicky, um, this would be a great video to watch since I'm going to go through it. Um, there's like one or two special things that you need to know that the tutorial doesn't cover, so I'm just going to quickly cover those while I'm going through the tutorial. So if you're getting stuck in the tutorial somewhere, just watch this video with me and I'll get you through it. So, this is going to be a new save. Um, I already have a current save on here, so I'm assuming that's what the Parallel Universe thing is about. So I'm just going to crank this to like 390. I have no idea what it does. Um, and it looks like we start out with Dauntless Arrow. So, yeah. We'll go with that. You have to question everything. Why do people go missing in the rings? The company blames pirates. But why would anyone resort to piracy? Alright. Or not. Okay, so on a new save. <laughs> Roar Flutter is going to make me go through the tutorial. Okay. Well, that sucks. Um, save and exit the main menu. Okay, so that's good to know now. <laughs> Can I not go through the tutorial again? Oh. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to go cover the mechanic. I and mean, this is going to be part one of the playthrough, apparently. What do we got? So... <laughs> this completely sidelined what I was gonna do. That sucks. Alright. I am... actively not going to put anything on right now. And I'm gonna go fly out to the ring. And show you the issues you might have in the tutorial. And then we'll get back to this. <laughs> So I'm just going to launch to a random position on the ring. We're not even going to worry about it. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. It's just a 2D mining sim. It's really fun. Like, there's a high level of complexity within the mechanics of the game itself, and there are some random encounters you'll run into, and it can be quite enjoyable. So, let's see here. You get in, it'll automatically slow you down if you have it selected to do that. It looks like I do. So it's gonna put us, actually no, our target's 10 meters per second, which is fine. Alright, so the first thing to go over for the mechanics, obviously, forward, W, backwards, S, left, A, right, D, and then you can do uh, positional rotation controls with E and Q for the respective uh, direction, and then if you want to use a full stop, it's X, you want to use your rear main thruster, it's just shift. X will then slow you down, fire your main weapon, I'm going to point it this way so I don't hit the ship in the distance. That's how you fire your gun in space. Um, if you want to target something, or move, um, so it'll be right mouse button is for the direction your ship is facing, hold down the left mouse button and move it in order to adjust the velocity that you want your ship to go at. If you want to target, press F, point at the object, release the mouse button, and then release F. And that's how you'll be how you lock. That's going to be the one that's getting everybody in the tutorial. 
And then from there, after you're locked onto the object, you hit space, just fire your gun at it, should break apart in pieces. We're gonna do it again for those little rocks, and we're gonna get a chunk. And then you'll use F, lock onto it, same methodology, and then you're going to match your speed. So basically, if it's on top of the object, you'll see this two meters per second, so I'm either moving two meters per second faster than the object, or I'm moving two meters per second slower than the object. It looks like I'm moving faster than the object. So we're going to accelerate to about 10 meters per second. You can push it a little bit past that, but you have to be careful because depending on the area, you're going to press enter to open up your cargo hold, and then it'll go inside and it'll sit in there. Now you have to be careful because right now we don't have baffles on. So if you're shooting at something, you'll see it over here on the uh, bottom left. See how the chunk of object is in the top of our hold right now? So that's inside of the little mouth here right now. So if we want to get it to go to the back side when we go after our next piece, just give it a little thrust, and it should start floating back down. So that's something you're going to need to keep track of in the starting area. Um, we're going to go get baffles after this run through. Another thing to know is your Doppler is up here. This will identify all the locations of any body near you. So um, it'll do a constant scan and do a little update. So that rock to our left is right there. If you want to destroy a rock that's close to you, you can actually use your thrusters to do it. Like that. So if you're ever running out of guns and you want to go grab another chunk of material, you can try to do your thruster thing that way. You can break apart rocks with your rear thruster, so if you're coming in too fast, just point your ship in the direction that you, the opposite direction you want to slow down and just fire your rear thruster and it'll destroy the rock behind you. You can also press X with your ship pointed in the direction of, uh, your ship pointed in the opposite direction of travel, it'll do the same thing. Um, and that is the fastest way to slow down. So if you're entering an asteroid field and you want to go to a uh, visual feed stop, right? And you want to go into the white area, it's best to approach with your ship facing the opposite direction of travel just in case you run into a giant cluster of rocks that you can find difficult to get through. So right now, all we're going to do is go through and mine a few rocks, get a little bit of money. So starting off, we don't have any way to know exactly what these rocks are, so we're just going to grab some rocks. That's essentially how this is going to work. And this will be our starting cash in addition to the 20k you get initially. Um, your starter ship does also have an insurance amount, and what that does is it gives you money for repairs. So let's say you take damage from running into a rock, or um, you get hit by a pirate, that starter cash will at least give you some money so you can repair your ship and keep mining. Um, you will run into pirates, you will get hit by mining ships occasionally. It's best not to engage any of the mining ships, so anything with a marker. So in the Doppler you see the BLT-3008, that is another mining ship. If there is a ship near you and it does not have one of these markers, it is a pirate ship. And it is best to avoid if you can get away with it. Um, the only times I'll engage them is if they're actively going to engage me regardless of what I do. <clears throat> so that uh, diamond is what your current is and the circle is what you are trying to set it to. So you'll just use the left mouse click on the circle area, and then you'll do that. If you're not careful, you'll do that. We're good, though. Alright, so we're getting a little bit of money out of this. You can also indirectly fire and control this way, and then the delta is essentially just whatever you want it to, wherever you want the ship to be. It's basically the squares on your ship, you're moving as slow as possible. So right now we're at 2.3 meters per second velocity. Um, there are different HUDs, and depending on the ship you can use, uh, you, you can use any of the HUDs with any ship. So if you like this HUD specifically, you can keep using it. Um, when you switch over to a different ship, it'll have a default HUD set up. Um, if you have a uh, different ship, different type of ship. So there's a few different types of ship in the game. <coughs> And they'll have default HUD set up, so if you want to use the default mining HUD, 
then you can do that. Just gonna grab a few more rocks here. And then I'm gonna go over the J functionality. And we'll head on back. Because I usually don't grab too many rocks in the tutorial area. Since this is our first outing, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab them right now. Okay, there it is. Let's go ahead and yep, yeah, break that down. Two rocks right now. This is where it can get tricky. Come on. There we go. I'm gonna grab this one first. I'm gonna try to get to it pretty quick. We are at the edge of the ring, so if you want to do a manual return, you'll just fly left and keep flying left until you get out of the ring area and it says, hey, we're doing a manual return. Like that. But that's not what we want, so what we're going to do is readjust our positioning. Because I'm going to show you. And no, no, don't, no, damn it! <laughs> No, we're good. Okay. So that'll happen if you overheat. Um, so if you get hit by a microwave beam, it'll overheat your uh, reactor and your computer, and that'll cause your systems to shut down, which will make you lose all of your HUD. That's just something to keep in mind. So depending on the weapons you're using, so if you're using heat-based weapons, uh, you can overheat your ship that, ship that way. I think we're pretty much done with the mining for now, so I'm going to go ahead and press J. Um, we're going to go to the Astro Gator in a minute, which is the way you get back, um, because I'm going to go talk through the other points real quick. Uh, this is how you go. You click on the location you want to travel to, and then just hit block course. Um, this is the Geologist tab. You will not be using it pretty much for... Uh, good portion of the start it'll be a little uh, actually we might get a geologist next run so I will talk about it a little bit more once I get a geologist I'm going to try to get one for the next tutorial or the next plate uh, uh, the next part in the playthrough is that is that what it is I think it's what it is we're gonna go with that so then you have the pilot tab. I haven't really messed with it, but basically what you do is if you have a ship in your area, you can go to the pilot tab and you can hail them, and then you can have a little conversation with them. Sometimes it'll be something as mundane as, hey, have you seen any good mining areas? Or it'll be like, hey, one of your crew members owes us money. And you'll be like, oh, crap, now i got to go through this dialogue. And um, usually you'll end up having to fucking pay them off. So it is what it is um, pirates will go through there um, I didn't get any this time around but if you get a chat message notification there will be their their icon and then just above the icon will be a little diamond with a J inside of it if that pops up just hit J on your keyboard go to the um, pilot and it should show you all the chat comms down here in comms um, this specifically, I don't know if we're going to get any because I don't have any loose chunks floating around. Um, but it will show you basically whatever is in this area. So if you click on beryllium, if there's beryllium in the area floating around, it'll pop up. Um, tungsten, tungsten in the area floating around, it'll pop up here. You can use this as a general guide to where you should probably be heading for new rocks that you want to mine. So generally, you want to be going after beryllium and tungsten right now are the highest value but starting off you just want to grab whatever you can get other than that we're going to initiate a jump so we're going to go to the astro logger now and i'm just going to hit block of course and you want to be away from any rocks when you do this because your ship's going to accelerate forward a little bit and if you run into any rocks during the calculating return trajectory, it will stop the calculation and you'll have to shoot the rock out of the way. Oh, so this is where everything's going to get. It's almost like a little notch. The difficulty curve on this game is quite high. 
So, yeah, not bad. 27k. It's a good starting cash. So we're gonna sell all. We're gonna set up our ship now. So I'm gonna go to. Oh, I'll go through the menus first. There's repairs. So if you take damage in the asteroid field, um, let's say your engine gets a knock because you ran into a rock, uh, it'll be decreased percentage-wise, and you'll also see something like misalignment, wear, or choke. Usually it's, it'll be a misalignment and wear that will occur, and then you can, I think you can... I don't know. I haven't really messed with the menus too much in the J menu for that. Um, I actually got in mechanic pretty early on in order to deal with that. So when you take damage, the mechanic's able to adjust those values. So if, you, if your ship takes quite a lot of damage and you need to get out, you get out. This is where you will go to repair your ship. You can fix it, which will do an incremental repair. So it's about 5... 100 credits and it'll fix it by anywhere from 5 to 7 percent is usually what I've seen um, if it's if it's damaged enough it's advisable just to replace it instead of fixing it and then especially depending on what the damage is tuning I don't really mess with it but I think it's force calculation, so if you want your thrust on your thrusters to be higher than you want the thrust on your... Yeah, I don't know. I don't really mess around with it, so I'm not really that focused on it. You can kind of ignore it for now. Um, I'm sure it does come into play later. Services, I have no idea what these are. I've looked at them. They just look like hotel rooms. Um, so I assume you get something for going into one. Equipment. This is this is where everything get, gets starts to get confusing because all of these modules have different um, attachments. So these are essentially the hard points on your ship. So obviously there's the three hard points here. Then there's there's your kinetic ammunition, and then nano drone components. Um, propellant tanks, reaction control system, all of that has different preset values. So the first one I would go to is go all the way down to cargo bay and give the cargo bay baffles immediately. And what this will do is no matter what, as long as it's within this section of the cargo hold, it's not going to fly up. It's, it's very nice. It's probably the first mod you should go grab for. Um, the next thing you should do, other than that, early on, it's it's really just making money. So going back out there and shooting rocks. I don't think there's any other mods you can really buy at the moment because we don't have a lot of cash on hand. And micro emitters are 60k, so that's not happening. Uh, you could hypothetically get an impact observer if you're worried about taking damage, and that is fa essentially functions as a massive shield. Um, so if you're going too fast into an asteroid, you can impact on that side, and it will not do damage to your ship, or as much damage. It'll absorb some of the impact. Burn aim. Um, don't worry about nano drone components until you have a... Where are they? Either the tug drones, the haul drones, or the maintenance drones. Um, starting off, the tug drones are great, but they're 250k a pop for the module that is able to control them. And then at that point, you're going to want to go to the nano drone components and grab either the basic, the industrial, or the military. Um, usually starting out, you'll just go with the basic. I, I would not go into industrial or military until like you're actually at a level where you need them. Don't tank, not worried. Uh, fuel rod, not worried. Reconnaissance drone. So this will change your LiDAR capacity. So the gravimetric is really nice. I'm tempted to grab it this early on because it gives us a density calculation. But the problem is we also don't have any tugs right now. Um, tugs can be extremely nice, so you don't have to tr chase rocks all over the um, field. But we're also going to switch to a microwave emitter instead of this... Um, 
uh, mass driver at some point. Um, the mass driver is really nice if you want to break down large rocks, but if you're trying to do early mining, it tends to be a little bit easier with the micrometer. The manipulator is just an arm. So unfortunately that's not going to do us any good right now. So as soon as we get 60-70k, that's what we're going to go for. Uh, moving on to the dealer. So the dealer is where you're going to buy and sell ships. I have run into a ship out in the field once. Uh, and I was able to sell that ship for like a mil, luckily. Um, and that was able to push me a little bit further along. I didn't sell it off very early because it was kind of useful at the time. Just to have that backup, just in case something happened. Um, so... Basically, all these ships have different mods. This is the one I'm currently working with, my other save. Um, I've started seeing these. These are pretty interesting. Um, they have the largest early cargo hold space, but I don't know if they're worth it. I kind of want to check one out, but I don't want to jump on it this early. Um, the starter ship is extremely maneuverable compared to um, this, and I have a feeling it's going to be the same with the... Um, what are they even called? Uh, with the Corthon 212s. So the Corthon 212s and the Starbus Eagle Prospector are. Well, the Starbus Eagle, Eagle, the Starbus Eagle Prospector is very specifically um, difficult to maneuver because it is designed in a way that means it has very little stopping power if you're facing in the direction of travel. So if you're moving through a belt collecting rocks with it, you can run into issues where you need to 180 the ship in order to slow down. Um, it's just a note. For that ship when you get it because the first thing I did with it is I literally took it in and one of the other miners was trying to steal my ore and I ended up trying to get it back and of course I wasn't thinking that it was going to be a different flying experience and I took the engines and I rammed them both into an asteroid and that was excellent um, it didn't cause too many issues, it was still a little bit back, it wasn't really an issue, uh, that big of a dilemma, but, like, it kind of humbled me, I guess? Because I was like, oh, this is not going to be as easy as the starter one. Um, so that's something to keep in note. Um, but yeah, the different prices on each one of these will be based on the mods that are already installed on them. Any of these that have an exclamation point, if you go to examine ship, you'll see that some of the modules are damaged. So the nuclear reactor on this one is damaged and the thruster is damaged, but the two big ticket items are the reactor itself and that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty manageable once you get the money up for it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, there's really no reason to have two starter ships unless you want two separate configurations and you don't want to just swap between the mods, but it's super easy to and you're going to be running with one main ship anyway, so it doesn't make so much sense to have two. Unless you're like worried that for some whatever reason you're not going to have money uh, to run the second one, which at that point you should just sell the second one. Um, that's kind of what I figured into. It looks like most of these have nuclear reactor damage, which isn't really a big deal. The thing is, we don't really have any money for a new ship right now either. So I'm going to go over and go to crew and see if we can find any new ships that would, uh, any new crewmates that would be worthwhile. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a beginner with um, self-taught experience. And that is a geologist. That specifically. And we want to hire them. So the reason we're grabbing that immediately is because they are extremely useful for your starting mining. Even though that they're going to be relatively 
bad at predicting the value of the rocks, they will help you prevent um, grabbing really low value rocks. So when you can't tell what the rocks look like, it'll be more obvious in the next episode when we're going through the mining, but basically um, certain rocks will have certain values and based on those values it may be worth it to grab them or it may not be worth it to grab them, but that's pretty much it. We got her, we're good, so that'll be in the next episode. Um, logs is pretty nice because it'll show you your overall loss of money over time as well as your total gain of money over time and you can check, oh, what did I buy in trading, what did I sell, what did I get, cargo bay baffles. Um, who, I'll show you who you hired, show you what you did out there in the field. So, ring drive, we did a nine minute run, and we collected 16 kilograms of water, 329 kilograms of beryllium, yada yada yada. So that's nice. Anyways, that's it for today, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.